I can have your attention here in the media center and up in the press box, we will start our post-race media availability for today's Can-Am Duel at Daytona race number one. And we're joined by our third place finisher, Daryl Wallace Jr., driver of the number 43 Click and Close Chevrolet for Richard Petty Motorsports. And Bubba, you know, it seemed like you were holding out mid-pack throughout most of the race, really biding your time, waiting to make your move. Talk about the decision that you made uh, at the end of the race to really start going for it and, and really uh, walk us through the end there. Yeah, well, let me start off by saying I just had a, a bodyguard walk me from the car to uh, here, and his name was Richard Petty, and I have never seen him that excited before. That was the coolest thing, uh, him coming up, huge hug. Glasses were off, sunglasses were off. Um, got to see how much, you know, he was truly excited about that. And uh, so that, that is probably the highlight of the night, better than finishing third. Just uh, there, there it is on TV. Um, so just seeing how, how pumped he was and, and uh, just the, the words he said there were definitely words of encouragement. But um, from the drop the green flag, you know, we had a, we had a kind of a pact made up of we were just going to ride, you know, get to the top as soon as we can. That's what we did, and every time the top prevailed on, on restarts. So our uh, our click and close Camaro Z01 was you know was it was decent all night. I don't I don't know enough about these races to to really say what I need, but um, we kept all four tires underneath us, um, kept it off the fence, kept it off other cars. So I say all in all, it was a good day. Um, that last restart, um, I was pretty proud to. Pretty proud of Ryan for taking the bottom there and stopped doing all that team stuff. Logano didn't like it, but it, uh, I gave Ryan a good shot there. I think I gave him too big of a shot. Um, but uh, it was a good race to the back, back to the line, and I just moved up a little bit too late. But you know, Joey and I both said we would have both wrecked if I would have went up any higher there at the end. He wasn't lifting, I wasn't lifting. So all in all, come home third. And uh, hey, I did the same thing. Um, uh, come home third, and it's a good start for, uh, for our Daytona 500. Okay, we're also joined by our runner-up in today's uh, race number one, and that is Joey Logano, driver of the number 22 Shell Pennzoil Ford for Team Penske. And, you know, Joey, once again, it looks like uh, uh, Team Penske has it figured out here at Daytona International Speedway. Please walk us through your race from your perspective. It was going really, really good um, until, we, <laughs> until Blaney wanted to pass me. Uh, you know, I thought we um, all worked really well together. Team Penske cars were, um, you know, doing a good job at pulling each other up to the lanes we need to and then being able to control the race from there. And um, the team orders are, is, you know, you work together as much as you can and then you race each other for the win. Um, so you know it's coming. Uh, surprise where Blaney made the move uh, to pass me there because that's the same place he did it in the clash and uh, it didn't work for him in the clash. So I was kind of not thinking he would do it there. Um, and then he made the move and I thought I was still in decent shape uh, with Brad behind me. Um, and even down the back stretch, I thought I was going to be in good shape and then they wadded him up and the 100 feet of the race that I didn't lead, the caution came out and, and that scoring loop, I guess. I don't know. I saw the lights and I was in the lead, but apparently it's, it goes back to the loop, so figures. And uh, so we lost control of the restart, and then the, the two best friends there ever was was sitting next to each other, and <laughs> I apparently don't have any friends. <laughs> I've seen your race It's all coming back not, to me. Not anybody's friend. <laughs> I know. I could tell. <laughs> and uh, so... Um, yeah, so I was kind of a lone ranger uh, trying to get the 31 to pull up to me. And um, Daryl did a great job pushing Blaney. I mean, as soon as they went, they were hooked and going. And uh, just the timing was off behind me. So um, they were able to, to clear uh, really the whole outside lane. And then I got a good run there at the end from the 17. Just gave me a good push and then uh, was able to get back. You still made it a 1-2 finish for the boss. So yeah. what's, what the hell? Uh, it's just it's the one part that oh. you always go for, but I haven't been there in a, a while. Race. But... You want to, the first is where you shoot. For. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> we're just happy with top fives lately. But it was good, and uh, I don't know. Two seconds so far this uh, speed weeks, which is okay. If um, you can look at it two ways, you can look at it as okay, or you're the first loser twice. And um, hopefully, we're saving it for the the big one. So two Penske cars so far, and hopefully um, the third one's the the big race, and uh, it's the big bright red and yellow one. Okay. We're going to open the floor up for questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless microphone to you. We'll start here with Jenna and work our way around. Jennifer, I have a question for each of you. The first one, Bubba, um, I heard Joey say, I, I assume tongue-in-cheek on TV, that you and Blaney might as well be teammates out there. Um, <laughs> Pretty close. I mean, there at the end, you guys worked together really good. Yeah, we did. Hell, I had to give him a shot. You do pull down I mean, as on hard the, as the time. You gave him such a hard time in here earlier when we were doing the Fox. Uh, it's my little brother. I got to. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you guys go play your drums together. 
<laughs> so my question was, uh, was it uh, was it deliberate that you gave Blaney that shot, or is it just that's who was there and you had to go and give that's, somebody a push? That's who was there. That's I would expect the same from Joey. Uh, if, if I was leading, he was third. I would expect the same amount of shot uh to do that i'm not gonna not shove anybody just because who they are um my, my plan was to push them out there and get clear of the 22 and the one have somewhat of a run but 22 did a good job uh stalling me out long enough and finally got clear and and i uh, got back around me so uh no matter who it is if i'm third i'm gonna push you i'll push you all the way i can and joey um is there any reason to believe that a, t a team penske car is not going to win the 500 no reason to believe that no we're going to make it happen I don't get questions like That's these in the other it. series. These are crazy. <laughs> this is new for me. <laughs> we're going to come up front to Jessica here. The big leagues. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jessica Ruffin with NASCAR.com. This is for Bubba. Um, what did Richard Petty say to you when he was walking with you? And then how did you feel up there? You know, you're a rookie and you're up there, I mean, contending for it, the win at the end. Yeah. Uh, he was all right, bud. Good job. Big hug. A little bear hug from the king was awesome. Um, he was just he was just proud. It was just good to see uh, his car was, was running up front where, where it needs to be. Um, and then we started talking about who was where at the end. And Joey got the toe and got the push and got back around us. But all in all, he was just he was so proud. And you could really tell and see his emotion. So he really had to be there to, to feel it and uh, definitely made you feel good walking in there. It felt like we had just won the race as, as proud as he was. But, uh, but you know, for the rookie stuff, I mean, that's just a stepping stone. We still got a race to get through now. Um, you know, Drew had come over. Good, nice job. You're, finished, start, you're starting seventh for the 500. I'm like, all right, doesn't really mean much because we got 500 laps or 500 miles to go. Did the king give you, like, that death grip where you're there in your shoulder blade? It was, uh, it was one of these, like, full wrap. And okay. then, he, then he, he, like, walked like this uh, all the way back. Oh, really? Yeah, all the way. That's a lot of loving. Yeah. He always throws his thumb, like, into oh, my shoulder yeah. blade, and yeah. it, Bob puts me to the ground. Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> that ain't hard to do. <laughs> we'll go next to Brendan, then we'll go upstairs to the press box. Brendan Marsh, Charlotte Observer. This is for Bubba. Bubba, first time, you know, with the extended time in the car when it's your car. Does it give you confidence, this sort of performance, or do you still want to be able to learn from this? And, and you know, do you have to sort of temper expectations a little bit still? Yeah, no, I'm still learning. Um, you know, that last restart, I, I legit thought I would get put three wide uh, from the 41, um, just from experience. And uh, I did my best to hold him off. And then from experience there coming to the line, it was just a rookie delay. Uh, knew, knowing that the 21's coming off a of four, or the 22's coming off four, um, get up there. You know, it's, he, I think he had, he, I mean, he had so big of a run, he could have just went right around me. The other way yeah, yeah, run. exactly. It'll, it'll look like something that GoPro Motorplex, uh, if, if I would have pulled up. <laughs> Um, but, you know, for me, I'm just going to keep learning. I'm an open notebook all night um, from figuring out these tough questions that I'm getting asked to, to racing out on the track. Right next to Mike. Mike Embry, USA Today. Joey, it's almost like the Penske team has an embarrassment of riches here. If, if you're running like this with 10 to go in the 500, all three of you, how are you guys going to kind of figure out who's going to work with who? Or are you going to work with one of the other guys, one of your teammates, or somebody like – Bubba's going to be there. You're going to hook up with him. There's a lot of thinking in a little amount of time, right? Yeah, and you, you have no idea what the circumstances will be, right? Um, it, it could be anything, um, any certain cars lined up. And that's what, you know, Blaney did there at the end as uh, we got to the point that it's, hey, it's racing for the win. It's green-white checker. Um, you know, and, and he saw, I think the 31 had some kind of parachute off the left rear. It looked like the quarter panel was ripped off the back and. They saw that, um, and and I think Daryl was a good car to go with as well. So, um, you know, it's a the right decision. Uh, I felt like, man, I'm on the top. This is great. If I can just be on the outside, going down the back stretch, uh, I felt like I had a, a decent shot at being able to clear him into three. Uh, but I was too far back. By the time they shoved Blaney, was clear before we got to turn one. Um, so yeah, they just made the right move there. But but I mean, as far as the decisions you make through, uh, it's just all circumstances on, on who's where. And um, like I said, we our, our team orders are work together as best you can. But it's a race, you know, and they expect the uh, rider expects us to race for wins, and um, that's what we've been able to do for the first two races, and it's worked out pretty well. So uh, we all still like each other, which is good. Uh, it, it's it's a challenge, um, you know, when you're all racing for a win. There's a lot on the line. And uh, it's, it's, that's probably one of the most challenging times for teammates uh, is to be able to work together because you guys are 
on the line of winning, not on the borderline of finishing fifth or something like that. So uh, it, it's probably the most stress on a on a relationship of a, a team. Um, but I think we're, we're strong enough that we've been able to, to get past that and be able to keep working forward. Next to Holly. Holly Kane, the uh, NASCAR Wire Service. But what does this do for your confidence about the Daytona 500? I mean, surely this is the the way you want to go into the race, feeling very good and optimistic. Yeah, for sure. But uh, for me, I, uh, I think uh, younger me, um, I would be bouncing off the walls and just being ready to climb in for the 500 and, and, and not thinking that, okay, we have you know a lot more practice to go and then we have to get through 500 miles of it. So right now I'm just just like, okay, great, we got through tonight. One car um, didn't get any wrecks, didn't make any dumb moves, uh, hopefully earn some respect from the veterans out there. Um, but knowing that it all just is, is just a reset, big reset button on Sunday. So uh, still a lot of the work left to be done before we do climb in. So uh, I'm just, just so proud of my guys and, and, and what they have brought to the racetrack, what they're bringing as far as attitude-wise to the racetrack. It's uh, sure in hell fun to be around. Go to Jenna and then up front, Kenny Bruce. Joey, you uh, have won a Daytona 500 for Roger, and we all know what – the Indianapolis 500 means to him. What does winning the Daytona 500 mean to him? It's a pretty big deal. Uh, yeah, it's, it's huge for anybody to win the Daytona 500, no matter if you're Richard Petty, you're Richard Childress, you're Joe Gibbs, you're Roger Penske. It's, it's a huge deal to win. It's the biggest race of the year, um, in, in my opinion. It's it's the Daytona 500, the great American race. It's uh, It means a lot to be able to go out there and, and win that thing. And... Uh, you know, it, it, it's special to have to be on the list of um, drivers that have won significant races like the Indianapolis 500 or the Daytona 500 or um, a lot of other ones that they've been able to accomplish. Um, you know, it's special to be on that list that, that Rogers been able to win. But, um, you know, I, like I said, it's big for anybody. <laughs> it's, just, it's a huge race. You know, the Brickyard 400 is, is one that, that stands out for us as well that uh, Team Penske hasn't won yet. And that's the one, you know, that would be really cool to deliver for him. But um, doesn't take anything away from what this race is. This is still the biggest one, in my eyes at least. Did you get anything special from him? I got a good hug. <laughs> guess the same thing <laughs> Daryl just got. <laughs> You didn't even have to I'm win the story. Daytona 500 for that. <laughs> um, no, nah, I mean it's. I mean you, you don't really need anything, you know. It's just the the fact that he's there and he's enjoying it with you, and and you can you know party together as a team. I, I think that's really all you want, right? You, you just want to have that that gratification that you've won the biggest race and he's there and we can all enjoy it. Close it out here with Kenny. Kenny Bruce with KennyBruce.net. Joey. Um, Obviously, Blaney's a talented driver, but are you kind of surprised that the addition of a third team, those guys have been able to be as strong as they have as quickly as they have? No, I'm not surprised at all. Um, I, I would expect that. Uh, that team you know, basically was a 21 team uh, last year for the most part. So, um, yeah, they've all worked together. Blaney is getting better and better at this uh, super speedway racing, obviously. Um, you know, so it, it's not a surprise that you see uh, the speed that they have, and um, not just here, but you'll see it throughout the season, um, that they're, they're strong. They're, they're good. Blaney's gotten a lot better as a driver, and, and knowing the information, just sitting in the meetings and listening to him uh, now compared to a couple years ago when he first started, and you listen to his feedback then to now, he's just way more confident in the information he's giving, that he knows that it's good, and, and him and Bullen's got a, a good relationship, and, uh, and they're strong because of it. Um, you know, it's cool to see their growth, you know, from where they are. And, you know, at first we didn't really, as, as a team, you know, we didn't lean too much on – on that car and because yeah. there wasn't much experience there and they weren't sure of what they needed. Um, and now it's a true three car team where we all lean on each other um, equally. You know, there's not one team that I think is better than the other right now. We do have one question in the press box. Go ahead, press box. Let's see. Press box. Come in, press box. Earth the press box. Yes. I like Kenny Bruce on that. has a nice ring to it. Well, gentlemen, seeing how the box. press box is not working Fell. at this point in time, congratulations on your run tonight, and uh, good luck on Sunday in the Great American Race. Thanks. Right. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Seth. We will go ahead and continue on with our post-race media availability, and we're joined by winning crew chief Jeremy Bullens of the number 12 Menards Peak Ford for Team Penske. And Jeremy, 
coming out of the gate with uh, the first uh, first triumph of the, of the season. Ten points on the board now for you. Uh, talk about uh, that number 12 for tonight and uh, how you got at the victory lane. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been a... Uh... How about now? Perfect. Yeah, it's been a good week so far. Um, everybody at Team Penske put a lot of effort into the new rules package and trying to understand what we needed to be fast here. Uh, you've seen all week the three of us can kind of work to the front and, you know, the other two guys, you know, Ryan's learned a lot from them about how to manage the line and that kind of thing. And so uh, it's been a fun week so far. Uh, and, you know, obviously we'll keep working to try to make things better and be back here on Sunday. Okay, we'll open the floor for questions. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll start up front with Kenny. Kenny Bruce with KennyBruce.net. Jeremy, you talk about Ryan learning, you know, from, from Joey and, and Brad. Have you learned anything working closer with Penske now in the Super Speedway program? Yeah, I mean, I've learned a lot since I started here from those guys. You know, Brad's one of the – Brad, to me, is one of the best uh, of this era at drafting. I mean, you've seen how many races he's gone to the front of the pack and managed both lines and, and can stay out front. So – uh, obviously, those are things that we pay attention to and talk about, you know, myself and Ryan. So, uh, you know, you've seen Ryan be in position to, to win two of these things at the end, and we're one for two, so that's not bad, I guess. So, um, you know, like I said, there's one more on Sunday. Hopefully, we can put ourselves in position again. Additional questions down here at the deadline room. We're going to come down here to Matt Weaver. Matt Weaver, AutoWeek.com. I just wanted to ask you a little bit about the, the new inspection tent and how your team has gone through it and what your overall impression of the, the closed tent system is? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, if you look at the past several years, you know, with the starting with the LIS, um, NASCAR has done a great job of trying to make inspection, uh, you know, a little more clear cut. And, and a lot of these tools, the, the technology that's out there allows us to measure things and it's either good or it's not. And, and that's the beauty of it. And I think that's... Uh, very exciting for the future. I think it's going to speed that process up. I think it, it kind of gives you a – there's no interpretation. It's either green or it's not, right? So I, th I think that's a big step forward for the sport. Um, I think so far what we've seen is, is it seems to be very repeatable, and that's what you always hope for when there's a, a big change in technology like that. Uh, as long as it continues to do what we've seen so far, I think it's going to be a, a good step. Go to your left, the mic. Mike Henry, USA Today. Jeremy, uh, Sunday – you guys have three good cars, obviously. If the three Penske cars are up front with 10 to go, um, there's going to be decisions to be made about who goes with who, and do you, does one of the guys try to go with a fourth non-Penske car? Do you leave all that up to Joey pretty much, or can you get involved in maybe making some, helping him make some choices? I, I, I'm sorry, Ryan. I wanted the top on the restart. So, like, I, I can't – you know, like, those guys kind of do what they want to do when it gets to that point. You know, like, I – he said, I said, what are you thinking? He said, I'm going to take the bottom. I said, are you sure? Like, but, you know, he knew what he was doing. He, he had a plan. And, um, you know, those guys are smart. They know what they're doing. And, and, you know, I might coax him one way or another if I really feel strongly about something. But, um, you know, I think the, the key is that race is a lot longer. And we've got to work really hard together to get to the point where we're, the three of us have to make that decision. That's a really good problem to have with 10 to go into 500. So, uh, you know, I think the thing that we've talked about and the thing that we'll continue to talk about is, uh, trying to race smart as long as we can to the point where it's one of us that wins it. And I think that's the thing that we've got to try to do. And um, it's a long day on Sunday. You can't have many, any mistakes and, and try to keep ourselves up front to, to have that problem. Additional questions for Jeremy? Go to Holly. Holly Kane, NASCAR Wire Service. Did the did the race kind of go like you might think it would in terms of the accidents that that occurred, the way people were racing, the way the cars played off one another? You know, I think the the, the forty eight blowing a tire, that kind of stuff's unfortunate because you wind up taking out two or three cars, and um, you know, every time there's a wreck, there's less and less cars, and it kind of dictates what you do at the end because you know there's not as many people behind you helping you. So, um, you know, I. I think that was the probably the worst part is it's unfortunate they had that issue and took out a couple cars early. Um, I think the the I don't want to say the race would have been better because it was a pretty good race, but you know it's always more fun when you have more more cars in the line and kind of you know move around a little bit more. But um, I, I thought to me these either the first one goes perfectly calm and nothing happens, and then the second one's a disaster, or the first one, there's a bunch of stuff, and these guys will probably ride around and be smart and not try to get their backup car out. So uh, it'll be curious to see what happens in the second one, but I bet it's pretty calm. 
Back to Mike. Did you see the replays of the two Stenhouse wrecks, and were you surprised at how the other cars reacted to the to the air? No, I think that, you know, it's something that we talked about all week um, and leading into qualifying. There were a lot of guys who tried to sit on the pole. And, and you know, I, I think you saw the 88 being smart with their car because what it took to be fast for a lap is probably not what you need to drive well in the race. And I think a lot of people figured that out. And, and I think, you know, it's even going to be worse on Sunday if it's 82 again or whatever it's going to be. So, um, you know, I think guys learned a lot. I think being in the clash this year for us was big uh, and understanding what it was like to race in the daytime with these rules. Um, so I, th I feel like we took a lot away from Sunday that look forward to working on the next couple of days to be ready for Sunday. Any additional questions for Jeremy? Jeremy, you are free to go. Congratulations. Good luck on Sunday. Thanks. And now we are joined by the race winning driver of the first Can-Am duel at Daytona. And that is Ryan Blaney, driver of the number 12 Menards Peak Ford for Team Penske. And uh, it seemed like you had some friends on the track when it mattered most, and you made the most of those friends. Ryan, please wake, walk us through uh, those closing laps from your perspective. Yeah. Um, I thought our car was super fast uh, all night, and uh, I thought all three of our cars were really fast, myself, Brad, and, and Joey. It, it's a shame the two got tore up there. But um, I thought we were able to really control – control the whole race pretty much and um we saw that in the clash uh, the two was able to control it and joe was able to control it and i was just kind of the middle and um we we had kind of a set plan you know to try to work with each other the best we can i think we do that great as a as a whole organization but um nice to know that we have some really fast race cars and uh it can also be aggressive at the same time and race people we don't just have a fast car in a straight line we can make aggressive moves and i think our balance between the two is uh is pretty good right now so uh, it'll change. I, I'm. I'd like to, my car to do a little bit different stuff for Sunday. Um, you know, tonight uh, I could get a little bit free, and Sunday you're just going to be having your your hands full a little bit more. But uh, really happy with the performance of our car, and um, yeah, nice to have a friend there at the last restart. Uh, that's why that's why I chose the bottom because he was in third, and and I figured he'd uh, he'd help me out a good bit. So uh, he did a good job all night. But I'm um, really happy for our, our whole team, and um, can't thank everybody enough from the the whole organization for uh, giving us a fast car. Okay, we'll open the floor for questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll start with Mike and go to Holly. Mike Embry, USA Today. Uh, Ryan, why did you make your move to the inside when you did? How, how did you make that decision? Yeah, so that's the same spot I made the move in the clash, and it didn't work, and it almost didn't work tonight. But I was coming with such a head of steam, I had to. I, I, you know, Brad laid back so much um, from whoever was behind him, so I kind of laid back to Brad off of four because I didn't want them to get a huge run. And it just propelled me so fast to Joey. I had to turn left. I would just ran him over. And um, I really didn't want to make my move right there because it, it didn't work. It really shouldn't have worked. And, um, you know, I, I was trying to plot where to do the move better. I was thinking about that all week after it didn't work in the clash. And, and that's not the spot I wanted to do it. But I was just coming with such a head of steam. I, I had to turn left or run the 22 over. Go next to Holly. Holly Kane, uh, NASCAR Wire Service. Could you talk just a little bit? Bubba was in here, and he was very psyched. I mean, it, it must have been somewhat comforting. If, if it wasn't a teammate, it was one of your best friends that could mm -hmm. be there and, and kind of be there at the end with Yeah, him. Yeah, no, he did a good job all night. Um, I, I was watching him the whole time, and he did a good job of picking which lane to go with when and, um, you know, not having much experience in these cars at this racetrack or the speedways, uh, it's, it's hard. It's hard to choose what lane to go with when and kind of stall lanes out. And um, I thought he did a really good job. And, and like I said earlier, that's why I picked the bottom on the last restart, uh, because he was down there. And I felt like he could give me a good push. And I figured if I was clear, um, both lanes getting into one, I could control him enough to, to go on and win the race. But uh, so, yeah, he did good. Hopefully he can um, you know continue to show what he can do. And I know a lot of people have uh, you know, given him um, you know not a lot of – uh, we got a wreck. Um, not a lot of you know credit in the off season, and um, I think he proved himself tonight that he uh, should be here and deserves to be here, and I hope he can continue to do that. Do we have any additional questions here in the deadline room for Ryan? Let's go to Godwin Kelly. Right here, Godwin Kelly with the News Journal. Um, you're the uh, Cup Series points leader right now. What do you think about that? <laughs> there ain't no points in this racing. Uh, not tonight. Sunday is the one I'm worried about. And 
you know, it, it's nice to win this one, to be honest with you. It, it's really, really cool uh, to be in victory lane in anything at Daytona, whereas the Clash or a dual race. But, you know, Sunday is, is the real uh, – that's, that's when you go to the pay window. So this doesn't um, – you get a cool trophy with this, but uh, you don't get a ring in your face on a trophy uh, for this race. But uh, it is nice to get in victory lane. It starts your weekend off good. You know, it just pumps everybody up and, and gets everybody ready to go and just shows the strength in our car. So We'll go next to Jenna and then back to Mike. Jennifer, AP, um, I asked Joey the same question. Is there any reason to believe a Penske car won't win on Sunday? Yeah, there's plenty of reason. I mean, there's 37 other cars. Um, yeah, we're, we're super strong right now, and it's really cool to be, um, you know, I'd say probably the, the best team right now uh, on, on this whole week. But you never know what can happen. You know, we could get broken up or, or things can We could get in a wreck. You just never know. So I would say, you know, I wouldn't disagree that, you know, we, we might be the favorite team right now just because of the speed we've shown. But uh, you never know what can happen. We could all finish 38th, 39th, and 40th. But uh, it's definitely nice to be confident like this with fast cars. Um, where, where did you get your confidence in plate racing? I remember, I, I guess it was Talladega three years ago, and you were the only one that would try to go with Tony Stewart and create a second line. I mean, wh where did this come from, and where did you get how, – how did you settle in so quickly as a guy who could do this? Um, I don't know. You know, um, when I first started racing – uh, the Cup Series in 15, I think we did all the speedways, and uh, you're just kind of learning. You're just kind of going with the lanes, and uh, you're like, okay, I guess you know, I'll go with Joey or Brad. They know what they're doing, and, and you just learn. You know, I, I learned a lot from watching Brad. I think Joey and Brad are two of the best at this stuff, and uh, I learned a lot from, from watching them and being teammates with them, and um, I think you just kind of absorb all that, that knowledge over the years, and, and you go from somebody who's just following – uh, and going with lanes to creating lanes and creating moves and, and wanting to be the lead car. And they used to not be that way. And I think it's just experience and, and reps when it comes to super speedway races. And, you know, fast cars help too. They give you confidence of making those moves. And um, when you have fast cars like that, people tend to go with you. Uh, but um, I, I think it's just experience and time. Next up, Mike. Do you think the wrecks we've seen tonight are have been partly, at least partly caused by the fact that some guys are set up for speed and some for handling Is that yeah. um i don't know i didn't i haven't seen a replay of any of them so i don't really know i know the 48 like blew a tire or something and i don't know what happened to william uh or if, if the 17 got him loose or whatnot and on the back stretch I, I think the one jumped outside of brad I'm, I'm not really sure but there are some cars that i could see um you know a little bit and i've been watching a little bit of this race and there are some cars that can't really uh, they don't drive very well i think they set them up kind of for speed you saw the the 88 drop right to the back and not race. Yeah, you know, he's got the pole, but uh, which, you know, they shouldn't be able to, um, don't want to tear the car up. There's a pole sitter, but uh, there are some cars that are more in control than others that have tried to get too much single car speed. And that's where it goes back to where I think our cars are great is we have a good bit of both of, of balance and speed. So um, that part is, is nice, but there are, are some that are pretty, uh, pretty wild right now. And that'll be for a handful on Sunday. Ryan, congratulations on the win tonight, and good luck on Sunday in the Daytona 500. Thank you.